My name's Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. In episode four of the design prototype series, we're gonna take a look at how some of the components are assembled, laser cut, and fabricated. Let's get into it. The solar charger has a series of pedals that fold together. And we made the blanks in the last video. We're gonna be using a laser cutter to cut the individual pedals out of the blanks that we made already. You can click on the link above to watch the previous video if you haven't seen it already. We create a path in Illustrator and we allow the laser to use that path to cut out the pieces out of the plastic styrene. A local makerspace in my area called I3 Detroit has a laser cutter. I was able to get them to cut the pedals for me. I created a path in Illustrator and the laser is able to follow that path to cut out whatever I want. In this case, cutting out the pedals out of the blanks that we made in the last video. Now when I'm cutting flat parts like this, I usually cut extras. And here you can see I'm cutting a couple of extra feet just to try out a different design. Um, it's easy and quick. The setup is done and so that allows me the luxury of trying different stuff. Where the laser really excels, of course, is cutting curves. The laser can cut things much, much more accurate than I ever could at a fraction of the time. With all the parts cut out, it's time to do a little bit of cleanup. And we're just going to sand the edges of the laser cut parts. They are, after all, just melted plastic and that needs to be addressed. The parts all have a very tiny little lip on the edge, so we're going to sand off that little lip uh, created from the laser. Here's some 220, but I'm going to start with 180, and I'm using a sanding block. I can't stress this enough, always use a sanding block when you're sanding. doesn't matter if it's a car, a model, whatever. You want to get a good surface, use a sanding block. Don't use your fingers. Your fingers are soft and formable, a sanding block is not. So whether you're sanding a curved or a flat surface, always use a sanding block. Did I mention you should always use a sanding block? So here's all my pedals. They need to be sanded. I'm going to start with the 180. First I'm going to do the edges. Then I'm going to do the surface. Get it all really nice and smooth. Whatever imperfections are in the plastic, I'm sanding it out. Then I'm moving on to a 220. And then I'm going to go to a 320 and I'm going to wet sand them. So normally when I sand, I always wet sand. And the main reason is safety. There's no dust in the air, it all goes down the drain, I don't have to wear a mask, and the sandpaper lasts about three times as long because the particles aren't clogging up the sandpaper. So I just wet sand everything. For this video, I did both just to show you that you can dry sand, but I prefer the wet sand. So now that all the pieces are sanded, they're ready to be assembled. I'm going to weld them together. I'm going to use a plastic styrene cement. It's the basic model cement that you used when you were a kid uh, to put cars and airplanes and tanks and things like that together. When we're welding this stuff together, we're using a solvent. It's not a glue. It melts the plastic together at a molecular level. So it softens the plastic when I put the glue in there, the solvent evaporates, and the two pieces are permanently bonded. It's pretty tough to get them apart. So next, we're gonna make some hinges. And to make these hinges, we're gonna use some styrene tubes. And that's one of the beauty about styrene, is it comes in a lot of stock, tube, and uh, square sizes. Um, and I've made some videos about that as well. You can click on the link here to check out that video uh, and learn about some styrene model making basics. So these tubes, uh, are going to form the basis of the hinges. I'm marking on the part where the hinges are going to go here. And then we're going to cut some slots in the tubes and turn them into hinges. I make some cuts the long way on the tube. And this allows me to remove some material and basically get a tube that's about three quarters of a tube. And then this just turns into a simple barrel hinge, or what I call a barrel hinge. So 
I make a final cut and then I remove that section of the tube and you can see here how the hinge is going to work. It allows me to attach it onto the foot and in this case the door, the battery door. And uh, I'm just going in here and I'm solving welding it on. Bonds right to the styrene, works fantastic. It makes a super clean weld, there's no glue or anything like that. You get a nice permanent connection, and it's fantastic. So I'm going to use basically the same hinge technique for the feet and I sand the surface flat where uh, the hinges are going to come in contact with the plastic because I want to increase the uh, surface area. I want to have a really good connection here. So I want to maximize that uh, surface area to get a good bond. And I just brush the solvent on and here I'm using a syringe. Uh, the syringe allows me to basically very precisely inject or uh, place that cement. So here I'm just adding a little tab for the door so I can click shut. And I'm going to also add some little tabs onto the feet so that they can only open up so far. This is what allows the solar box to stand up and the feet to stay upright. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some lathe turning. We're going to turn the round circular body of the solar box. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on the little icon on the bottom right of the screen to do that. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Plus. Rock on. I hope that you check out and enjoy some of the other videos that I have. Don't forget to like and subscribe.